Today we are going to learn to identify five basic types of chemical reactions. Why do we need to do this? Well, if you ever go on further in chemistry, being able to predict the products of an equation is very important. If you knew what pattern it follows, then you will be able to predict the products. If you don't know what type of reaction you have, then it is much more difficult to predict the products. So, first of all, this is a synthesis or combination reaction. Synthesis means making something. If you synthesize music, you make music on a synthesizer, perhaps. You combine different sounds to make the music. And in a synthesis or combination reaction, two or more reactants combine to make a single product. That's the key. There is one product after the arrow. There can be more than one before, but there can only be one after. So when you have a synthesis reaction, you will have three things, three chemicals, two, before, two or more before the arrow and only one after the arrow. A decomposition is the exact opposite of a synthesis. There is one reactant and more than one product. You will probably have three compounds, one before and two after. If you only have three compounds in your balanced equation, or unbalanced equation, you either have a synthesis or a decomposition. If there's one after the arrow, it's synthesis. If it's one before the arrow, it is breaking down or decomposing into more than one thing. Next, if you have four chemicals, two before the arrow and two after the arrow, then you either have a single replacement, a double replacement, or a combustion reaction. Single replacement is also called single displacement. One element replaces or displaces another element from a compound. So here we have element A and compound BC. Notice the element has one single capital letter and the compound has more than one capital letter. That's how you know the difference. So A is an element because there is a single capital letter and BC is a compound because there are two capital letters, meaning two different elements. Then A beats up B and steals its C girlfriend. So A and C are now dating and B is by itself. So that's a single replacement. You will see an element plus a compound on the reactant side and an element plus a compound on the product side. And it's okay if you have a compound plus an element or a compound plus an element. It's okay because one plus two is the same as two plus one. Addition is commutative. You can switch it. A double replacement reaction is kind of like A and B are married and C and D are married. And they split up and they split up and A uh, marries D and B marries C. And so they've kind of like traded off spouses or something. Either the husbands switch wives or the wives switch husbands. But that's how you find a double displacement reaction. So if you have all compounds and no elements, then you have a double replacement reaction. Now, if you see a little bit of each, if you see a compound and element on one side, and you see a compound and a compound on the other side, then which one is it? Is it single or double? It's not. It's combustion. Combustion means burning, not exploding. A lot of people think that when something combusts, it explodes. And some, some, th some things do, but not everything. So combustion only means that it catches fire and burns. What do you have to have to have a fire? You have to have oxygen, right? And therefore, the element will always be oxygen. Also, if you're burning a hydrocarbon with, gee, guess what? Hydrogen and carbon. Then you will always produce CO2, carbon dioxide, and H2O, water vapor. So you can either look for these chemicals, something with carbon and hydrogen, reacts with oxygen and burns and produces CO2 and H2O, or you can look for the pattern of an element in a compound and a compound in a compound. Either way, you'll find that you have a combustion reaction. Also, I said it always makes carbon dioxide if there's plenty of oxygen. 
I forgot to mention that if there's not enough oxygen, it will make carbon monoxide. And this is why you don't ever want to burn, say, your grill indoors, because it will use up all the oxygen and stop making carbon dioxide and start making poisonous carbon monoxide. You breathe in and out carbon dioxide every day. You breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. Then you breathe in a little bit of that carbon dioxide, you just breathe it out. But it is fine, it's a tiny amount. It's not poisonous, it's not going to kill you. Now, if it's the only thing you breathe, then yes, you're going to die from lack of, lack of oxygen. But not because it's poisonous, just because you don't have oxygen. Carbon monoxide, or carbon monoxide is the way you should pronounce it, uh, is poisonous. So it will kill you even if you're breathing plenty of oxygen with it. So be careful about that.